Hey, thanks for checking out Nets and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today we have a 2005 Ford Escape Hybrid 2.3. So if you ever get one of these and it won't start, you're going to get in and you're going to get a message that's going to say service high, vo high, high voltage system or, or something along those lines in the, in the message indicator. You're going to scan it for codes and you're most likely going to have a P1A10 that's going to be in the PCM. It's going to say hybrid battery disabled. Uh, and then usually in another module, you will have something like a P0A7D, and that will say hybrid battery low state of charge. So the proper way to go about this is what you want to do is you want to go under the kick panel. I'm going to show you how to, how to jump start this high voltage battery. And then we're going to go from there. Let's go check it out. All right, so here we go. If you have this problem and your high voltage battery, it won't start because it's dead. You pop off this cover right here and there's a button. You pop it off. And that button right there, you push it one time with the key off and you wait. Hang on. Ugh. All right, and then you wait eight minutes and then it should start. And that's jump starting the high voltage battery. All right, so now that you've waited the eight minutes, you get in, you should start it, it should start no problem. The only disclaimer is you have to make sure your 12 volt battery is good. If your 12 volt battery is good, pushing that button and waiting eight minutes, it should start and should run no problem. Now the tricky part here is technically what you need to do after this point is use a Ford IDS scan tool and you need to rebalance the high voltage battery. And that rebalances all the cells and get them back to where they're supposed to be. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to re remove and replace the high voltage battery. I'm also gonna show you how to do a repair. So on this vehicle, not only did we have a dead, a dead high voltage battery, once I did the eight minutes on the high voltage on the switch, it started up no problem. I rebalanced the battery, everything was fine. I checked all the modules and uh, we had already updated the, uh, the PCM and the TCM, I believe. And so at this point, I had an ABS module that needed to be reprogrammed, uh, needed to be updated. And I also had a code P0A96. And that is a very common problem. That is a hybrid battery cooling fan number two control circuit. So there are two codes associated with this. Uh, I can't recall the other one. The TSB for this code specifically, uh, it states replace cooling fan, high voltage battery cooling fan kit. I'm gonna show you how to make that repair. Let's go check that out. But before we do that, just know, I removed the high voltage battery because that's what the, there wasn't really a procedure for these cooling fans until you opened up the kit and it told you how to do it. Now, Ford tells you to remove the high voltage battery and put it on a surface where you can work on it properly you could probably do this in the car, but I would just remove the battery, it's easier. Uh, I did it with the battery out of the car and uh, also gave me a lot more access to make sure everything was done right. Uh, actually, I don't think you could do it in the car without removing a whole bunch of plastic panels because there's bolts in the sides. Uh, there's torques in the side, there's, a, there's torques in the sides, there's a hex in the side, things like that. So remove this battery <clears throat> and let's go check this out show you how to take this battery out and I'm also going to show you how to install this kit from Ford. Alright so in this video I'm going to show you how to take out the high voltage battery and also how to replace the the cooling fans for the high voltage battery. First thing you're going to do is take this carpet out. Alright here we go. The fans are underneath there but you have to take out the high voltage battery to get to the fans. The first thing we're gonna do is right here, the service disconnect. It's in the lock position right here. So we're gonna hang on. All right, we're gonna unlock it and then we're gonna put it into the, it's hard to turn, this is like brand new. <clears throat> 
so you're gonna you're gonna turn it to the unlock position and you're gonna take it out and then you're gonna move it to the service shipping position so when you're turning it it's going in those two right there in that one and it's turning in and then you're taking it out and you're putting it into that hole right there you got a light to show you all right so we're gonna put this into service shipping mode which is disconnect so we're gonna just put that in all right there we go service disconnect all right okay so to service these cooling fans you have to take out the high voltage battery all right so we've already put this in service mode and that disconnects the high voltage battery uh, the first thing we got to do is take out this ducting here and you're gonna have five screws this one's missing the lower part so we're gonna take these out we're gonna take this ducting out here next thing we're gonna do is disconnect this is a two wire connector but it's six pins we're gonna disconnect that wire that connector right there and then that's a 10 millimeter right there for that 40 pin connector we're gonna undo that Okay, so once we've taken out those five, this is going to lift up like that, all right? And that's going to expose the perimeter bolts for taking this battery out. All right, let me go get those connectors done done over there. The next step, we're going to take out this bolt right here and this little plastic rivet. And we're going to take out this cover, covering the high voltage cables. Okay, so underneath the right rear seat, you're going to fold this piece of carpet uh, fabric forward. And you're going to have uh, three nuts right here to take this piece all the way out. All right, so once you've done that, now you can see the high voltage cable disconnect. We're gonna go ahead and move this piece of foam here out of the way. We're gonna need to move that anyways to get to the perimeter bolts. You're gonna push this lever, lever in. You're gonna rotate this forward until it clicks. And then, all right, so once you've done that, you're just going to pull this back. You may have to lift up on the cables here to get some slack. All right. All right, so once we've done that, we're ready to take out the high voltage battery, and there's nine perimeter bolts. There's four. So there's one, two, three, four, five on the back, and two on each side. Uh, right there and right there. So we're gonna take all those out and then we're ready to take out this high voltage battery. Okay, so this is backwards. I've spun it around. But what I did was I came in from this side of the bracket here with a ratchet strap and I pulled the, the strap out of this side and I hooked in here and we're able to pick it up like this with a cherry picker. But now you gotta take all the covers off. And so now I gotta move this ratchet strap because I had to use a cherry picker to get it out of the car because it's really heavy and awkward. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to use here, I have this boltster mat right here. And we're going to use this to put all the screws and bolts in so I know exactly where every one of them go. All right, there's a lot. All right, so step one, you're going to have a, a Allen here and a Torx here. Uh, the Torx is a six millimeter, no, the Allen is a six millimeter, and the Torx is a T30. Got this Carbine Tools Master Hex and Torx set is gonna do this whole job. All right, there's one on each side. And then here you got an Allen. According to the procedure, the original battery has two hex bolts but they're not hex right now. So I'm gonna take out these two tens and we'll go to the next step. All right, next step is this front battery cover here. We're gonna take this off and this is 18 T30 tamper proof Torx. And that is also in that kit. All right, let me get these off. All right, so the bolts mat worked out perfect. You got a Torx and a hex on each side. Up at the front, you have two 10 millimeters on mine, but Ford says they're hex. And then the 18 Torx. We got the cover off. Before you take the cover off, you need to lift the service plug. Just lift it up and, and set it down. 
and then take the cover off. And this is what the inside of it looks like. These are all the battery cells, all the wires. It's what it all looks is the Ford manual for replacing this these cooling fans. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna do a real slow video so you can see all the wiring, all the screws, all the orientation of all the plugs to refer back to. That's just insulation right there. That's just a gasket that came out of its little hole. So we're gonna come across. This is very important because everything has to lay exactly perfect in here. All right, so the next step is to remove these two bosses here. Uh, the factory one, they're glued in. Mine are just gonna come out. So you have one here and you have one uh, right here. So we're gonna take those two out as the next step. Okay, the next step is gonna be to remove these seven screws around this ducting. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven keep make note of where each one goes so you put them back where they go okay i have blue tethers on the side so that goes to process b which is uh figure 11. and that is here and that is basically just lifting up the ducting this way and then removing it. All right, so don't disturb anything you don't have to. So I didn't touch this connector. All I did was move my ducting over here and lay it over there out of the way. So I left this connected. I don't wanna break any connections. I don't have to. Okay, so normally you would, you would cut these zip ties here, these four zip ties, two through five. If your battery's been replaced, you won't, they'll be already cut. You can see mine are cut. All right. All right, so the next step is if your battery hasn't been uh, replaced, then you're gonna have a bunch of insulation. You need to peel back. And we need to disconnect this connector and this connector because we're gonna be replacing these two fans right here. So the next thing we'll be doing is removing these four nuts from each fan. And then also the ground strap bolt right there. So after you've installed your fans, the four nuts and the ground and the bolt for the ground is 36 inch pounds. Put a screwdriver there to hold that as you tighten it because it's going to twist. And then the connectors here, when you reconnect them, make sure that the red tab pulls forward and locks in. Okay, so one thing I forgot to say is right up here where the red box is, there's a, there's a plastic piece that goes over each of the fans. So when you take the old fans out, you need to put those plastic pieces, you need to take them off the old fans and put them back on the new fans. Okay, so once you've got your connectors connected and your red locks pushed forward, the kit comes with this insulation. You're gonna wrap it around both of the connectors. Okay, so once you've got your connectors put back together, you're gonna use the zip ties and you're gonna re-zip tie the harness down to the case to keep the harness from moving and wiggling. And there's four zip ties that go across. Make sure you secure the harness. Okay, so in this video, I, showed, I also showed you the box with the part number for this cooling fan kit. If you start to Google this problem, it automatically comes up with the part number and it says Ford Motocraft high voltage battery cooling fan kit. It comes up as like one of the first searches on, you, on, uh, on Google. Uh, that's how common this is. Uh, so uh, I showed you how to replace those cooling fans. So now you, you should feel comfortable going in there and doing this job. Now, I don't wear gloves. I don't wear safety gloves when I, when I handle high voltage batteries or high voltage systems. Uh, in a Toyota, I'll usually generally check the, the voltage and make sure that the voltage is dissipated before opening up an inverter. But high voltage batteries, I, I don't use the gloves. Uh, you can if, if you feel safe doing it. Uh, to do that though, you're supposed to wear the high voltage gloves and then you're supposed to wear a protective glove over that. It'll come in a kit. 
the reason you wear the protective glove is because if you get a tear in the high voltage battery and there is a high voltage leak, then it will go through the glove and then you will obviously feel it. Uh, you wear the protecting gloves to keep the high voltage gloves from tearing. So that's technically the way you're supposed to handle high voltage systems. I don't do that. Don't just copy me because everything went fine. You do what feels what you feel comfortable with or what your shop feels comfortable doing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content, which you're definitely going to want to see. Also, check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for my daily life as a mechanic. And uh, I also show you all kinds of cool tools. I show you tools I just got, maybe the ones I'm starting to use that I haven't made a video about. And I'll also show you stuff that doesn't work, tools that I bought that are useless. And I'll also show you uh, some, some cool things with gas and diesel, just kind of show you what I'm working on. So check out my merchandise store, get yourself a t-shirt and a coffee cup, support nuts and bolts with tone. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you next time.